A lot of you have been asking me, Jay, what's the deal with the Tony Hawk build? Uh, still happening. I decided this time I was waiting. I was waiting until all the parts released and we knew exactly what everything looks like. And now that we know that we have new AMD graphics cards, new NVIDIA graphics cards, 13 series, series Intel, 7000 series AMD, I can confidently build this system now and not have to worry about something new coming out right after it. So anyway, I actually started some of the mods for this particular case. And I'm gonna take you for a ride today on something I wanna try that I've never done before that hopefully will, will turn out. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption about new stuff from iFixit. Wish you had a new graphics card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Mino. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones or just get them for yourself. Okay, so let's talk about some of the concepts here. And also it feels weird filming out here. Um, but anyway, so Tony Hawk being one of the the really early founding members of like the whole skate scene and, and really pushing the limits of like the kind of tricks that were considered humanly possible and whatnot. I really wanted to do a throwback build to really kind of commemorate the whole like skating is not a crime type of era in the late 70s and early 80s. And so what I did was I took the panels off of my NZXT 510 because um, we didn't want this to be a giant PC, but I needed flat surfaces to use for this concept. Uh, I ended up cutting, you know, the same openings like I did before in, in the, there is like a part one of this video anyway, where I could have better inlet airflow to the 510 without having to go to the new like 510 mesh kind of a case that they came up with. Cause I want this surface area here. Not to mention to me, these look like sewer grates, which I thought I could have some fun with, with like some like stuff kind of coming out of it or whatever. Um, but you might notice here, it looks all super roughed up and stuff. I've got a lot of layers of white paint on here that are just very uneven, but you'll notice this sort of a scratching right here. What I wanted these to look like are concrete walls. And this is a screenshot directly from the Tony Hawk, um, pro skater game where they've got, you know, the, all the tagging and stuff on there. So I started this concept here and I went by building up the paint layers and then scratching it. It looks like cracks in the concrete. Um, but I wanted there to be more bigger chunks coming out of there. I want it to look like that it's been, you know, people have been grinding on it, you know, and, and just looking like it's been all tore up of like a set of st stairs or whatever. Like I said, using this from the game directly as inspiration for the type of graffiti on the wall, as well as the just overall design of what is it, the, the broken up concrete sort of look like. So that's why I needed the flat surfaces like this. My problem is it's not deep enough. Cause it would be, the amount of layers of paint it would take to get this to be able to really look like cracks is gonna be very difficult. Cause what I wanna do is I wanna take a lot of my modeling expertise into this sort of a build. And I could use things like panel liner and other grime type of oils and stuff to fill in these cracks. Cause that's exactly what would happen in real life. It would get all dirty in there because all the rain and stuff wouldn't wash any of that out. It would actually just drive dirt into it. So I could use panel liner to fill in these cracks and stuff, but I want them deeper. So what I'm gonna be doing today is actually using fast drying Bondo to build up a thicker layer on here using just some foam to sort of apply like a texture to it because concrete is just rock, that's all it is. And so I'm trying to make it have sort of a smooth concrete type of texture. And then with it being built up with the Bondo, then I can go through and do my cracks and stuff in there that I want. Maybe build it up in the corners, sort of have chunks missing and just really start to age it up. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just kind of take you guys along for the ride of building up the Bondo layer. It's quick drying stuff. I mean, it's just, Bondo is just plastic. It's really all it is, plastic filler you would use in body work. Um, and then I want to just kind of start chiseling it out. Also too, because we are doing the graffiti stuff and I'll be using my airbrush. We just got a lot of brightly colored paints here that we can use. I kind of just looked at what were the colors that were present in that screenshot and then we just got a bunch of those colors, or obviously the blacks and stuff. I'm gonna be really kind of testing my airbrushing because I've never airbrushed graffiti. I can airbrush. I can airbrush grime and, and weathering effects. I've never tried graffiti, but I think I can do it. And you know what the best part is? If I suck at it, I can just sand it down, let it sort of show through and paint on top of it again. Because if you look closely at the renderings and you look at any real graffiti, it's on top of graffiti, on top of graffiti, on top of graffiti. 
that has been X'd out and other people graffiti over it and it's been weathered and it's like, it's dripping and running. It doesn't have to be neat. That's the best part about it. And I think I wanna use some of the actual um, specific stuff that's in the game on here rather than just coming up with these two cents is not a crime <laughs> or something. I'll, 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 I'll probably graffiti my logo in there somewhere. But, um, but yeah, anyway, that's my airbrush is back there and I've got my spray booth and all that. So let's start by applying my Bondo. And I think it actually came with a spreader now that I think about it. Cause I was like, nope, this is the hardener. Look, if you're a body shop expert right now and you're screaming at your screen, that's why you do it all. I'm, dude, it's a computer case. It's not a body, okay? Relax. Dude, you right now, like typing furiously, just stop it. Stop, I'm not gonna see it anyway. I made a Bondo butt crack. I'm not gonna have a lot of time to, to get it spread before it starts to harden, so. <laughs> <laughs> You're so immature, Phil. Why do they have to make it look so delicious, dude? Like, I know, it's like, it's like I want to eat it like it's frosting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna need like the whole can. Maybe even more. Because I want it to be thick. Normally you don't want Bondo to be any thicker than it absolutely has to be because it's just adding plastic to your car, right? But in this instance, I absolutely want it thicker. I don't think I put enough hardener in this one because it is not the same color. <laughs> Although it dries more blue because that way you can sand it and see it, you know what I mean? But that's the thing, I want this to be all ugly and uneven. I really do. And then, you know, obviously these, these streaks here I'm gonna be sanding out. Okay, I wanna try something here real quick. All right. All right, I need to wash my hands and let that dry, we'll be back. <laughs> Probably a little bit less hardener than I should have on this, like this is you know, still a little tacky. It's probably not ready to sand yet, but I'm gonna try it anyway. But look, it's done. Just kidding. <laughs> this, is, this is not done, obviously. Um, there's lots of sanding and stuff I'm gonna have to do, both by sanding block and by using automated sanding, not automated, but like power sanders. Because like I said, I have to get this all back down to a little bit more level but look, just this little bit so far right here. You can see how this is starting to look like concrete. I love it. It's really gonna sell the effect when it's painted. All right, so you can see some ununiform textures on here, which is nice. Uh, I've got my concrete effect. I've got what looks like a patched effect here. Mostly it's because the first bits I put down, I didn't do the texture on because they were already too hard. It's perfect though. Remember, we are gonna be building up layers of paint still and tagging on it. So you're only noticing it because that's the, the main layer. So I'm gonna paint it now. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of wipe it down with some alcohol. Um, I'm gonna do my first, basically a brown layer, or not brown, a gray layer of paint. And the reason for that is I'm trying to get it now closely to represent the color of dried concrete. So it's gonna be kind of a medium to light gray, depending on the type of rock that you use to, to make concrete, it varies. The paint will actually fill in some of these smaller gaps and stuff and will sort of level out a bit, but you'll still have very textured effects. I will then sand it just a little bit again, and then I will apply another coat of paint where I'm gonna dab on the texture and give it one more coat or one more like light sanding to just sort of level that out. Then we're gonna try reapplying my cracks and stuff. All right, so I've got some white paint on there now after the primer layer. Um, it looks really rough right now, and that's actually what I want because I want to be able to like do these cracks. So this is the top of the case right here. And what I'm gonna do, just like that. And as you can see, that only went through the paint. That didn't even go through the primer. Because now what you do is you come in here and you start to sand it down. Then you can just sort of work it in there. And what's funny is that once you get it in there, if you keep going through it, it'll follow like the, the crack line that's already in there. And with the paint being soft like this right now, it allows me to really sort of be able to get in there and start kind of chiseling it out like this and get this nice V, because I'm trying to get a V sort of in there. Now the thing about concrete cracking is it doesn't like go part way and stop. It splits. So I'm gonna kind of have to work this 
this one sort of all the way across. Say it started like right here. Okay. Now the thing is like the crack shouldn't be all perfect like this. There should be some chunks kind of missing out of it. So I can bring this over here. Start to make it a little bigger and a little deeper. It's also the thicker part. I'm sanding the edges and this is like a sanding block too. So it's like a sponge. So it's really smooth because I'm trying to create instead of like this perfect crevasse, I'm trying to create like this sort of a rounded edges to the crack. Cause over time it's going to get weathered and worn and yeah. I, I, I would believe that this is a painted wall. So, you know, that has a, a concrete crack in it. If I start wearing down some of the corners and stuff here, what we're going to find here is my gray primer. And because I also use the same block to do the gray primer sanding, it's now injecting some of that gray primer into the white when I use it like this. So now what we're getting here is just a dirty wall effect. You like people have been grind railing on it and stuff. Now here's the thing. I'm about to do all this again too when the tagging is on it just to weather it up. And then also people have skated on walls that are tagged. So the tagging can't be all perfect on this wall, but I'm pretty happy because this, this does look like a uh, proof of concept that is absolutely gonna work. And I'm really, really happy about that. Look at this. Now, as somebody that has had a lot of concrete poured in my backyard when I did the remodel and cracks form in concrete, you can't help it. That's what those relief cuts are for. Those seams, it's designed to allow the concrete room to expand and contract with the temperature and moisture. But what sucks is when you get a crack and then a fork crack out of it. So I feel like what we're missing right now is right here. We need a, an extra crack and this, when you start doing this sort of stuff is what really starts to sell the effect. The dirty sponge, since remember this is the bottom, this is the top. Grime and stuff would always go downward with rain. So you can just start pulling it down. Dude, some Hollywood level effects right there. All right, let me see if I can mix up some panel liner real quick to see how it will work on here. So the problem with these little paints is that they really start to coagulate when they sit, the little Tamiya airbrush paints. What did you think I was doing? Dirty. The cool thing about this is if it screws up anything, I just paint over it, you know. But uh, anyway, this is a lot of thinner Mixed with some Tamiya black. Well, it's not running like I want. It's a Q-tip, not a not a brush. So I'll probably just have to wait until I have my brushes here. The problem is my brushes are at home. You see how it's starting to like trace the line there? Yeah, I need my brush to do this, but it's okay because what I think I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and keep going with the Q-tip and I'm gonna sand it. See that one's going. That one's being a good little. There. See, that's how it's supposed to go. Look at that. But when it dries, it dries really thin, as you can see. Like, it, it's really thinned out, right? So it's not black. It's uh, more of a grayish. And the last thing I'm going to do now is just do a light dusting of white on it again. Just to mute some of the darkness of it. Because, I mean, you have to imagine this wall would have probably been repaired and stuff a bunch. You have to create a story. It'll create a story for the, the, the thing you're working on. And today's video and story was about would this concept of Bondo and stuff work? Now you imagine there's tagging and stuff on this wall. And that's gonna be the next part for this panel. But I also have to do what I just did to all the other panels, but I have to get more Bondo because I accidentally mixed it with hardener still on the spatula in here. So, <laughs> I can need more Bondo. <laughs> and this panel just got a lot heavier, by the way. <laughs> yep. I am very impressed with myself on this one. No, I'm just kidding. It, I mean, you just gotta get creative. Any material can be used in some sort of a neat practical effect. Um, 
I guess I enjoy this sort of stuff because this is what I wanted to do for a living when I was a kid. I wanted to build movie sets. I wanted to, to work in movies and special effects and all that sort of stuff. So that's why I really nerd, about, I nerd out about this kind of stuff right here. But uh, I can imagine this whole case put together and with the tagging and stuff on it. It's gonna look really nice. I hope so anyway. Hopefully, I'm gonna have to find something to practice on some, some artistic graffiti styles. I don't know. I mean, everyone, all the famous graffiti artists and street artists kind of develop their own style. So I can't, you can't copy that. So I'm gonna have to try and be in, influenced by what I see online and in the game and see what we can come up with. And that's gonna have to be the next part as we move on and get this project finally done and out of the way. That way, uh, Stoney can uh, deliver the PC that he promised. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like this sort of stuff. You guys said you want, like the two things you want, you said you want to see most in the poll that I did on Twitter. More builds, more mods. You can't get more modded than this. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.